During my time at InterDrone, I heard a lot about the ways drones are being used alongside of artificial intelligence, BIM, and so much more to capture data at the job site. However, I wanted to see if they are keeping an eye on workers as well. So I had the time and opportunity to speak with Chris Carodi, principal for DroneBusiness.Center, and Colin Snow, CEO of Skylogic Research, to discuss how drones are actually contributing to better safety practices on the job. Let's take a look at what they both had to say. We've been seeing drones all here at InterDrone all week long, and everybody's talking about the importance of drones. But I guess the real question I want to understand is, are we really benefiting from using drones at a construction job site? What do you think? Yes, and there are. And, and sort of the, one of the biggest benefits is the safety issue. The, the drones are a great safety inspection tool. So uh, I'll give you some examples. So some examples would be uh, taking a scan and creating a map of your area and understanding where there's hazardous areas. So when you're planning the job site work for the day or for the week, understanding where those hazardous areas are because the of weather that may have changed the landscape. Um, there may be, you know, you don't want slips and falls and you don't want to get ocean. You certainly don't want, um, you know, claims made against you. So anything that the firm can do to understand where those hazards are, that's sort of one use case. Um, one of the other, other ones is understanding like uh, egress. So when you're planning a construction site, uh, understanding where the trucks come in and come out, and you may change that over time. Uh, so drones can help that to make sure that that's safely done. We're seeing a lot of discussion on this. What would you say is happening in your side of the woods that you've been hearing a lot about? Well, I mean, the most basic thing with inspection, and it's not just in construction, is getting people off of ladders, off of roofs, out of helicopters, uh, and just literally ensuring the physical safety of the people who are doing inspection or minimizing the risks to them. Um, and, you know, the the ability to look over the hill or to see ahead um, is a big deal. Somebody, it's, it's a little off topic, but it's a funny story. They were talking about um, a sheriff's department out in the San Bernardino Desert popping over a rise and coming on a meth camp filled with pit bulls and German shepherds and everything else. Well, they had to leave. They were happy to get out of there alive. The thought is a drone can look ahead. You can send something ahead to see. Are there wasps' nests? Are there floods? Are there electrical shorts? Uh, I think we're going to learn about a lot about that in Houston right now, you know, what can be done with it. So, it, you know, it's, it's a, another pair of eyes that involves very low risk. We've been hearing now that drones are actually being used in Houston now with Harvey and, and things like that. Are we going to see a lot more of that not only on when we have hurricanes or other natural disasters, but the idea of rebuilding yes. a lot of things? So what are your thoughts about drones and the idea of being able to rebuild and the future of what will be for construction? Sure, that's a that's a big part. And so in, in planning for reconstruction, um, scanning the surfaces, you know, normally that's done from a ground, from a laser scanner, and then they'll uh, plan the building or plan the facade. But a drone can actually go up and circle a building, can actually get a 3D image of that building. And that composite image then can help the planners understand what's changed, what's changed over time. So in the life cycle of a building and the planning and the construction and the maintenance and then the deconstruction, in that, in that maintenance or construction phase where I'm doing you know, one or the other or both, um, the drone provides a safe way for you to go to heights and get an accurate photo scan of what needs to be done or the current state, right? And then in the planning part of it, they can also look at uh, the differences between plan versus actual, right? So there's another safety component in it in regards to was the build done to the spec that was required, right? And is there a safety risk in the way it was built versus the way it was planned? And we look at that right now as we think about safety because we have a lot of accidents on the job site, almost too many. So are we looking at drones right now as saying, as we rebuild some of the things from what's happened and we look to the future, are we hoping that drones will reduce the number of accidents on job sites? Do you think that'll happen, Chris? Well, I, you know, I don't know. That's so much is situational. You know, I think that 
more inf the the challenge that Colin and I speak about a lot is you know what do you do with all the information? How do you integrate it? Mm -hmm. One thing we haven't touched on, for instance, is you can put your drone up, survey the area you're working on, and correlate that back to the GIS data that's already available from the county for your permitting, and doing things like that. So. It's, it's learning how to use all this information, then BIM is the famous example in construction, right? It's learning how to use that and integrate that into your workflow, which becomes what can I do better? And at some point, the safety culture takes over and says, okay, well, if we have to do this, then maybe we shouldn't do that at the same time. So it, it, I think it's very situational. I, I would hate to categorize it, but you'd like to think that you know, people who can see more, know more about their environment should be able to do a better job of operating in it. It's nice to know those eyes in the sky have our back. That's Safety Zone from Inner Drone 2017.